Kate, I figure you probably have a song to get us going. To get us going for this episode. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. We're all stars now in the dope show. And this is where you guys go, Kate, that's the wrong. No, keep going. That's, that's the wrong Manson. Do a different one then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what's another Marilyn Manson song? I'll just suck Beautiful your own dick. People. Hold on. That's oh, the only one She's I sucking know. her own dick right now. So <laughs> I got my ribs. You're telling me I got my ribs removed for this episode and <laughs> I got the wrong Manson? I don't think you're in a spot to be losing any bones voluntarily. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Good <laughs> point. Osteoporosis. I, don't think I repurpose them. Crumbled yeah. two of my ribs for this? Damn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, finally, after much to do, we've been saying it Poor for Kate. about a month now, I think, that we are going to have our Charles Manson episode done now. This is it. You're listening to it. Um yeah, I'm excited about this. It's been a long time coming. I had no idea um, anything about Charles Manson before I started reading this book. Did you guys? Uh, faint. Like I knew. I, no, obviously, everyone knows the name. Right. I had. I knew a little bit about it because I want to say there was like a Rogan episode about this with Tom O'Neill. Oh, really? Maybe back when it came out. Um, but outside of that, not not too much. Dave. Um. The first thing that came to my mind when we were doing this little project was the liar, liar clip. Do you remember what it was when he's like, and then they're going to be raised by the Manson family. And I always wondered what that was. And that was from like the mid nineties. I will say this. I had no idea he just died. I figured he yeah. was dead like decades ago. Yeah. yeah. He I was 2017. I think. Was yeah. 20, 2017. 2017. He died. Yeah. yeah. He lasted a long time. I think I could have told you Helter Skelter. I yep. could have told you like that word. I knew that pig was written in blood. I knew Sharon Tate's name. Had no mm -hmm. idea who she was. And Roman Polanski. Yeah. Like I knew those names were involved, but I knew that Charles Manson had like the swastika on his forehead and that mm -hmm. he was essentially, I think for my entire- I knew about the family too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, my, yeah. like the quote family, but I had no idea what any of that meant. Yeah. But it is without a doubt, from the time period, at least the like our age group growing up, the Manson family was the epitome of evil. Well, yeah. I, I think too in pop culture, it's because it keeps. Did you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yep. That kind of is like the loose retelling of that sort of, and it, it's like it, the whole movie was, was kind of based around around that. it, yeah, yeah and, which was crazy. And then that's the most I ever saw of it. And then like. Um, Who's that song? Wouldn't it be nice if the Beach Boys? Yeah, yeah. wasn't we he did like a dog walk yeah. about yeah. that? About yeah, how one like, of the Beach Boys had a relationship with. Charles Manson. Well, yeah. Live that there. Yeah. could yeah. have kind of spurred this entire psychopath in a way because he they took credits Allegedly. away from him. Yeah. Because uh, he, he should have been, and he was at one point credited with a few songs that the Beach Boys had, you know, written and published. And then they took some of off. which he wrote yeah. in prison. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so we'll, I want to give a little bit of an outline because Charles Manson, I think when you hear some a story like this, it's surprising to see the criminal history. Um, that part blew my mind about Manson. His entire life. His but, entire life. I mean, yeah. his, he, you know, like nature versus nurture, it's probably both with him. Like he was the little kid burning ants yes, he and definitely enjoying was. the suffering kind he, of thing. And, you know, but first off, we're joined by Chief and White Sox Dave, yep. Barstool Chicago. And this is spurred because you guys all read the same book that got you into it. What's the yeah, book? Yeah, we had a good time doing. Um, the book about Dulles that we reviewed a couple weeks ago, and then mm -hmm. we decided to do another one. We're going to try to do it once a month or so. Yeah. Devil's um, Chessboard. And then, yeah, yeah, Devil's Chessboard. So yeah. now we're going to do, uh, this is called Chaos, Charles Manson and the CIA in the 1960s, I believe the title is. Um, but it's a fantastic book. But when I was first reading about it, I had, I mean, I guess you could kind of guess that somebody that has that level of, I mean, evil, I guess the only real way to say it, like that, they have that propensity for evil as somebody that does grow up that way. His mom was a sex worker growing up and he didn't know who his dad was. His dad was completely out of the picture. And the first time that he got arrested was at the age of 12 and that was for burglary. And when I hear of like crimes like that, it's different when you're doing, I used to love to steal. Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Doing a little shoplifting goofing was my favorite. Like, I had so many copies of Free Willy CD that I used to steal <laughs> from the on-base store. <laughs> like, you just never can have to. I mean, they scratched up all the time. You mm -hmm. wanted to be able to um, listen to that whenever. But this is like breaking into people's houses. He stole cars. Stole cars. Yeah. Like, the age of 12. Like, it, it's nuts. And so he finally got. My dad did that, too. Really? Stole a car at 12? <laughs> uh, kind of. So, I think I've told 60s, it. though? 
He was, it was probably about that time. Yeah. Yeah. So he, it was probably, like yeah. knew how to drive then. So he, they, he had a paper route, he and his friend, and they were like, this sucks. It's winter. Like, we don't want to be riding our bikes in the cold and the dark. So they started like pushing out the neighbor's mother's car and stealing the car to do the paper <laughs> route and bringing it back first thing in the morning. And then they were like, let's take it out on Halloween. <laughs> And then the car got reported stolen. And they had like a police barricade off of an exit off of the highway. No way. Yeah. How old was he? I mean, they were just uh, 12, 12 or 13, out. something like that. So your dad's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. yeah. yeah. Be cold. Yeah. 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 He got in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah. So he was, I mean, Manta was basically like chief's dad for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then at the age of 13 and 14, he once again, he got out. Uh, well, he left. He didn't even like get out. He just left the. Uh, boys home that he was at committed armed robbery again stole another car again and that was in uh, 1949 his first major arrest was at 16 when he was arrested for driving another stolen car across state lines he was on probation uh, violation over and over and over again they kept escalating like the types of schools that he went to from just like you just got kicked out of school to essentially like prison schools and that when he was 20 years old, he was arrested again for grand theft auto and sentenced to three years in prison. Um, he had another probation violation at the age of 21, which like kind of think about that. He's getting five years in prison, but he's out in two. Um, at the age of 20, he was given three year sentence. He was out at 21 to do m more time. He after he escaped from prison again from 1959 to 1960, he was arrested for pimping, forgery and federal offenses. I think getting arresting for a title of pimping is fucking sick. That's kind of badass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pimping's bad, but the title of getting title, arrested for pimp. Right. Yeah. And I got to say Foot something. Hats. I'm looking at this 21-year-old uh, mugshot of his. Pretty good-looking cat back then. Yeah. He had a good head of lettuce. Good head yeah. of lettuce. Almost mm -hmm. like he nice might part. be able to convince seven, eight young women yeah. to follow him. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so in that time, in 1959, he got a 10-year sentence, but that whole thing was... Um, it was deferred. So he didn't end up doing that. Uh, even though he got the 10 years, he ended up doing six years off of that. Manson was released from prison and moved to San Francisco. And that's when he begun. That's when he started the old Manson family. There's so much shit that we just don't have the time to cover. But in those, in those times he was getting, Manson was getting sexually assaulted while he was in prison by like inmates and guards. And from the time that he was 12 years old on, like constantly getting sexually assaulted, constantly getting abused in the prim the criminal justice system. And then it all kind of culminates when he gets out of prison and then you start the Manson family. And that's kind of where we're really going to dive in. Kate, off the top of your head, do you know anything about the scenes of what happened there? The, like of him starting his family in San Francisco. No, the scenes of like what actually happened at one zero zero five zero Cilio Drive, where he killed people. Yeah. Um, Have you ever heard any of the details? I know he Sharon Tate was pregnant. Mm -hmm. and he killed her in the driveway, maybe. All and kinds then, of shit. Yeah. yeah, like terrible, terrible stuff. And I know that it was because he wanted to start a race war, and so they set it up to look like it was like a black person that committed the crimes and was like, let's go like race war time kind of when it was mm -hmm. actually like him and his crazy squad. But that's all I know. Dave, when it was first getting going and telling you the story about what was actually happening, what was going through your brain? It, it was all new information to me. And, and like everything that you just kind of laid out on, on how he was brought up. Like my entire thing was, is this, this is a kid that I'm guessing was, just born exceptionally intelligent and everything in his life led the wrong like went the wrong way so he channeled that intelligence into legitimately like you got to have some weird thing about you to be able to legit brainwash people right like there's there are a lot of sociopaths out there but they're not all murdering and creating cults and doing stuff like they're just kind of annoying their families and like doing shitty stuff mm -hmm. but they're not like that level and i think he was a sociopath just like from birth but everything he went through made it like crazy is my theory i think it made him an easy target for yeah this program too so or that yeah for sure. Yeah. For the program. Oh, I have so many questions. Okay. So he gets to San Francisco. He starts his family. Then yep. what? So he starts the family and he essentially gets them going on LSD. Like LSD is a big 
player in this. Chief, how would you? You're pretty good at explaining shit like this. How would you? Uh, my experience with LSD. <laughs> I've you, I've done it. <laughs> have you really? Huge fan. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh big time. Describe what it was like. Oh man, it was like magic. So. <laughs> It was with a bunch of veterans, actually, and we rented a house. Uh, it's Tybee Island, and so we Down all went up Georgia, to the roof. Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah, Tybee Island, Georgia. We all went up to the roof at sunset, put a tab in. The colors started getting silly. I was like, "Oh shit!" And we basically the whole time as a unit, we moved as like an amoeba around the island, and our whole thing was everybody had to be good vibes. So you kept each other up, good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. No pressure. You would kick the ocean. <laughs> And the, it would be sparkles. And so we all started, and like you would say you saw something, and we were all so in tuned with each other that everyone else would then see it too. So I would kick the ocean and be like, oh my God, it's sparkling. And then they all started, and they're like, oh my God, you're right, it's sparkling. Then we found a boat, like an abandoned boat in the sand. It was like two in the morning, and we took over the boat, and we were like, we were stuck on the sand, but in our minds, we were like out at sea having an adventure. It was awesome. Yeah. Smoking cigarettes. God, we had I champagne. Had this <laughs> we were up all night long. It was awesome. There was a point where we went back to the house and a few other people hadn't taken it and their vibes were not as fun as ours. And I started seeing spiders uh, crawling nope. on everything. And they, nope. the, the group got me out, like had to group think me out of it and get me out of it because I was like, oh my God. I was having so much fun. We all took another tab at sunrise. We were like, let's keep this going. This Whoa. fucking rules. <laughs> I saw colors I have never seen in my life ever since that like, I don't even know if they- The glow exist. in your eyes right now is phenomenal. It yeah. was amazing. <laughs> and we were laughing. We like had the best time. And then one of the people who hadn't taken it, we had like rented cars and stuff, convertible, drove me around Savannah in the back of a convertible, just tripping balls and seeing the most beautiful shit. It was great, dude. I, this was posted, this was right after my divorce. So no, I, need, I, think, I really needed this. It was, yeah, you're sorry, I'm rambling, but I'm just no, saying. I, oh, it's oh, a great I actually story. think it's a perfect <laughs> this like, is, introduction because yeah. like yeah. what you're talking about, everybody seeing the same kind of thing, everybody reacting yeah. the same kind of way. That's exactly the way that they used LSD in these programs. It's like they, there was even studies about rats that used it. Like if you introduced some type of violent thing that w for the rats, then they would all react really violently. Or if it was like a good vibes thing, they would all kind of react the same way. Oh yeah. So there was some like hive mind in your LSD usage. Unity. Is, and, that, uh, is that what you got from it too? Yeah, and, it did, and, and that was, so this gets into like the MK Ultra stuff, which yeah. In the last book, Devil's Chessboard, you had Alan Dulles come out and he gives this like presentation about, hey, this is what the Russians are working on. We need funding to do like mind control stuff. Meanwhile, he had already started it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it was yeah. like, let's let's ratchet this up. And then you start hearing about these different psychologists um, out of Harvard and out of Berkeley that were running these different programs. The Berkeley program allegedly produced Manson the Harvard program with Timothy, I think it was Timothy Leary. Yep. That one produced the Unabomber. Or Timothy McVeigh, you mean? No. No, no Leary. Oh, Leary. Leary. He was a psychologist who was <clears throat> oh. doing this. Stuff. And they would like, they basically took uh, Ted Kaczynski, who's oh, from that's here. Who yeah, that's, that's who I'm yeah. thinking of, yeah. And broke his brain. Uh, and he was like a gifted mathematician, went to Harvard at 16. His, like 16. freshman year of college, yeah. right? 16. They like right. fucked yeah. with him so why, bad. Why take yeah. psych as an elective? <laughs> ruin his life yeah. and they just and they started doing all these kind of psychological tests while these people were on on lsd and, that's, and they have the same eyes too they look like they got dead eyes mm -hmm. yeah. yeah like though like you were talking about one mugshot from manson mm -hmm. like there's like that famous one where it's like he that's an evil yeah. guilty yeah because his evil eyes person. are yeah you see it right in his yep. eyes but yeah. it is it like puts you in a bubble and you all feel like and i hadn't done it i never did it since because even when we were in it you could feel how fragile every movement was like if if the vibe went bad like it could go so wrong like you could feel that it was like very and i was like yeah that was awesome i don't Never know if again. i want to do it again because if it went bad i get how bad it could go but you really do feel like very insulated and it and could be and you're talking about that's just like a two-day thing yeah imagine if you're doing that Constantly. every day over right. the course of yeah, months, yeah. Force yeah. years well they didn't even realize like the subjects were like afterwards hard to find because they didn't even realize there were subjects a lot of times. So wait, is this what happened to Manson in San Francisco? So, the government gave him the LSD? Maybe. Like so we don't know if the government gave him the LSD or anything like that. And we don't even really know that he was a CIA sub like subject. But if you look at everything that this guy presents, if this book is even remotely true, which the CIA has acknowledged again, just like they did the Dulles book, 
that there's a lot of details in this book that are accurate, but they're not going to parse through which ones are. Right. And if any of them are accurate in this book, it's crazy fucked up. Like mm-hmm. the things that happen in order to get like a race war going. And, um, but having that mindset where you're like, if the vibes are good, then they're good. But if they're bad, they're going to be bad. So bad. Yeah. So instead of sitting on the shoreline, kicking water and seeing sparkles, you're seeing those sparkles from blood droplets that are coming out because people are getting yeah. stabbed 28 times in a driveway. Yeah. Like, so that's how they used LSD to control these people into like a hive mind. So, Who? so the government or Charles yeah, Manson? The, the government. Well, by extension. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. Like so how, they started an LSD experiment. They got it in the hands of people out in the called city. Called MKUltra. Yeah. Right. So they were just giving it to randoms and like stood back to see what happened. Prisoners. They would, prisoners, yeah. they would set Psych up wards. like uh, brothels where they would, so they, cause they wanted, they would tell the hookers to drug their, uh, and they'd have like cameras and like watching everybody. And it was like a- The pr- government? Yes. yes. Holy CIA. shit. CIA, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm pulling it up what it is so I can explain it to you. Yeah. Um, and just for the, for the people who yeah. didn't read it. Too. We've done like some things on it, but I'll just a, a quick summary. Uh, MK Ultra was a covert and illegal program conducted by the CIA during the Cold War. The project, which began in the early 1950s and continued until the mid 1970s, aimed to investigate and develop methods of mind control, brainwashing, psycho- psychological manipulation, primarily through the use of drugs, hypnosis, and experimental techniques. Here's a detailed okay. overview of it. They, they had the Cold War, which initiated during the the, uh, the early years of the Cold War when a time when the U.S. government was deeply concerned about the threat of communism and potential Soviet advancements and mind control techniques. So basically they were using it like, they're doing it, so we got to do it. They used LSD and other drugs. Um, and you're saying there's enough evidence in this book that the that that's how Manson got his hands on Probably, LSD. I mean, okay. there's there's no it, doubt that he was a, he was one of the people that was experimented on. Correct. Oh I, shit. Okay, whether okay. or not they explicitly told him to like start a family and murder people is to be questioned. But there is like the thing where Manson would tell the family that they were going to start a race war, and I believe I might have this wrong, but I I believe it was we're going to start a race war. The black people are going to win. But then we're going to repopulate the earth with Charles Manson's seed and the family. And they were going to, he was going to be like a Christ figure. Oh. Yeah. So some would even call him like the Messiah and shit. Right. Okay. But a lot of it was through the LSD was about planting seeds inside people's heads. Okay. And they weren't sure where those seeds came from, but then everything started to come into fruition at the same time. And then the speculation, I don't even, it might be more than speculation was that the government did want, because he had the anti-war movement, you had, a, it sounds weird to say, but a freedom of speech movement, and that that was supposedly infiltrated by Russian and Chinese communists, and their anti-war, they're hippies and they're Black Panthers. So they wanted to have a hippie cult commit acts of violence. So it could be like, these crazy drug people are very violent we got to stop them at all costs we got to oh, lock them up so the whole it was like a government operation to squash the hippies yeah S- with squash thus, the squashing anti-war. the anti-war and, yeah movement. right because the, they the war machine want they wanted it to chug on okay you know? yeah okay so this is like 67 68 when this is really started. i i would say that's more than speculation yeah. based on everything yeah in, all the evidence yeah. and the yeah. for sure right yeah because yeah. how big the anti-war movement was growing especially <laughs> mm-hmm. in california so yeah. they saw manson doing these things they were keeping tabs on him they knew he was starting a family it was tr- like well quote, so quote, family it was like war. talking about knew it that's some of the craziest aspects yeah. of this so i i go through that list of what he had done in his early childhood it is not even close what he did to in, in his adult life and that they let him get away with so for instance, are you guys familiar with a lot of federal like cases, like how much time you're supposed to do if you get a federal sentence? No. no. Like So the state and federal level of punishment for crimes is drastically different. Like in Texas, you're supposed to do at least 55% of your sentence. So if you do like a, a violent crime, it's 75%. A normal sentence is going to be about 55. So if you get sentenced to 10 years for um, like – forgery, like high level, you're probably going to do about 55% of that time. The federal level, it's 90 to 95. 
is, yeah. is what you're going to do because it takes so much more work. They just don't believe in it. The federal level, you get your sentence. That's what you do. Charles Manson, that did not happen. And in fact, if you violate your federal parole, then most likely you're going to prison. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. 90% of the time, 95% of the time, you violate federal probation, parole, they're sending you back right away. Yep. This dude was arrested 15 times on federal probation and was never sent back. I had a probation officer for a while. That I was one of like 350 probationers that he had to take care of. Charles Manson had one guy. One dude was his probation officer, and that guy was responsible for no one else. Only Charles Manson. And this wasn't whenever he had murder on the books or anything no. like that. It was whenever he had the cross state lines because if you steal a cargo yeah. across state lines, it's a federal crime. Right. He had that. He had a one person parole board for himself. And there's, you could look forever and you're not going to find that anywhere else in the federal justice yeah. system. Yeah. Nowhere. So obviously, yeah, like we got to keep letting him out and let our experiment keep going. And this guy was in California. His one probation officer was in California, even though his charges took place in New York. He was on federal probation, decided on his own accord that he was going to move to California without telling anybody, without getting it approved. If I, whenever I was on probation, if I went outside of the county that I lived in in Texas, I had to notify somebody. Yeah. To up and move from New York to California is fucking crazy okay. that they allowed him to do this. And these charges that he was getting, like, that he would get arrested for, that they would let him out, it was for, like, statutory rape. Like, there would be a 15, 16-year-old girl that would run away from home, run away from home. Yeah. They would find her and him by themselves in a cabin multiple times. Boys, the same shit. Yeah. And they would just continue to let him out, let him out, let him out while all this was going on. Like some, he was Jeez. under investigation for some of this shit while they're letting him out of prison. There was the time that he was going to go to Mexico. Remember yeah. that? That yeah. he was he he was going to go to Mexico to like analyze soil or some <laughs> shit like that, and they were going to approve it. And I think someone eventually was like, "Wait a second! Like, what do you mean you're going to send this guy to fucking Mexico to analyze <laughs> yeah. soil? And uh, then, he doesn't even have a high school education, right? Yeah. Exactly. So like analyze it for pesticides or whatever. He's going to go to Mexico, and then." wouldn't you know it the company that hired him didn't really exist and was completely like gone no uh way. like all records of that company were gone within two years of and that he would have been completely gone i think yeah. if he would have done that they would have been like no nope, so that's the only time that. they ever reined him in was when it came to leaving the country how did he how was he like making money and surviving during this time so there's a lot of different ways like because it was the family some of these folks had jobs some of the like so, like the beach like a commune and he would prostitute them too yeah oh, pimp- so, okay yeah yeah um, Man. so the crime scene, cause I hadn't, I, I mean, I knew about it and I always kind of wondered, but not to the point where I actually cared, I guess. Like, how is this dude in prison for life? If he never killed anybody, let's talk about that for a second. If you feel like a mastermind is at work and they never did anything themselves, like physically, do you think somebody should be charged as the same as, it's as somebody? As somebody who did it. Well, and that's like the yeah. Nuremberg trials too. Yeah. Where it's right. Like yeah. You, if you're yep. administering mm-hmm. this, then you're guilty. Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Same thing. Yeah. yeah I think right. if you're in an absolute position of power over other people and th- you're able to make them do then yes, you're. I agree. Co-conspirator yeah. to yeah. like yeah. the purest mm-hmm. extent. So whenever the, the crime scene. So when they walk up to the doors, the cops walk up to the door, the word pig was written in blood on the front door. The message was scrawled by one of the killers and it was meant to incite fear and a disturbing indication of what had incurred inside. As the officers approached the house, they found the first body lying on the driveway. It was Stephen Parent, an 18-year-old who had been visiting the property's caretaker, and he was shot multiple times in his car as he attempted to leave. The way that the book describes this scene, it, it's jarring. Like when, so they, I won't go off of this. So they basically, <laughs> when they- saw. Yeah, it's a saw type of scene. So they they describe walking in to the house and it I guess it almost feels like the purge. Yeah. Right? Where they, they see somebody because they have this L S D hive mind and that they've So been, they didn't target this house, they drove by it. They did like, target the, the house. Oh they did, okay. Yeah. They did and it was Sharon house. Tate's house? Yeah. Okay. And so Roland Polanski. Okay. okay. So they wanted to go after Hollywood elites okay. that was th- because it garners more attention. Okay. You know, like you kill a celebrity, it garners mm-hmm. way more attention. 
So they're stabbing Sharon Tate in the mm -hmm. belly, like going over and over again, stabbing her, stabbing her. One woman w runs outside, they grab her, stab her 28 times. Another dude comes out, this guy, they shoot him over and over and over again. And even the people that were in the family describe it as being like, not a big deal, you know? Like when they're going through all the gory details and I, I forget who it was that did it, but she was like, yeah, even I kind of got like lost in the feeling of what it was like and how beautiful it felt to feel my knife go through her over and over and over again. And I, I, I'm blanking on her name now too, but she also, she gave different stories multiple times. Yeah. So like she would be like, I couldn't do it. So I held Sharon Tate while someone else did it. And then she, then she, interviewed in prison she admitted to it then later in prison she said she didn't do it so and she it's was, like are the, is she lying or was she who knows? So fucked up on exactly. she probably doesn't that, remember right. probably memory both. shift and yeah. when you're high so and fucked drunk. up on they said there yeah. was a lot of confabulation in the book yes excellent yeah. word yeah mm -hmm. excellent word um and also like getting stabbed at is like such a horrible like super suffering oh. insane way to die and that makes me want to cry that she was pregnant like that's also yeah. Just like a fucking nightmare. That's so terrible. There is one part where it described no, her. No, I know. <laughs> you go ahead. Cover your ears. Yeah, so there's no. one part where it describes her having defensive wounds where in the position of she was covering her stomach. Yeah. Like yeah. trying to block it. And the knives were just going like through her hands in order to stop it. Um, another person that was there was found dead near the entrance of the house. He had been shot twice, bludgeoned over the head, and stabbed 51 times. His blood Jesus was splattered on the Christ. floors, the walls, and indicating a desperate attempt to es uh, escape his attackers. Another person was found on the lawn. She had been signed, stabbed 28 times, a trail of blood leading from inside the house to her final position, indicated that she had tried to flee her attackers, but was chased, ultimately killed on the lawn. She was dressed in a white now. Uh, white nightgown which was now soaked in blood yeah like being one of those cops that pulls up how many people total got killed in that house in the house that day i think i think it was four, four and four uh, right yeah um but they found blood was everywhere on the walls the furniture the scene was chaotic evidence was frenzied in a sadistic attack the killers had used knives a 22 caliber revolver leading to a mixture of stabs gunshot wounds and blunt force trauma to the victims the there was furniture all over the place and then they w wrote the word pig over Sharon Tate's door, which was a chilling sign left by the killers. Yikes. And that's so the cops would think it was the Black Panther Party that did it? I'm not sure. I don't know how they, as far as I picked up, I don't know how they thought it was going to be tied to the Black Panthers. I think that's, that, I think that that's a decent theory. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. But yeah, so that was their whole plan well, and, and they were also kind of coming out just of because they used to black time. panthers primarily called cops pigs is that what it was like the that would make that's sense. what i do yeah, yeah that's the only thing i could think also too like women do not be murdering like that like that no. is yeah. so incredibly rare yeah it happens every now and then but like so incredibly rare and that to that level of physical violence also like incredibly rare i don't know if i've ever heard stories of another woman like well, Gypsy Rose, but that's different anyways. Yeah, um, but even but like, like crazy it, violent stuff, it's yeah. not... Typically, if a woman does a very violent crime, it's going to be to somebody that she knows. And she yeah, has been to right. do it to a stranger, a that's also right. like a whole other level of like insanity. Like the highest levels of people, women who are incarcerated for the most violence of crimes, typically it's going to be against like their husband or boyfriend yeah. or father or something like yeah. that, somebody who had treated them poorly. You don't see this. And I think that's one of the main reasons why it was a salacious story. Yeah. Because you had these women, yep. by and large attractive women, that were doing this. And- Murder is common, you know, like murder happens every day, like in all over the world. But this case is so different a lot of because of how lenient they were. And it seemed like for, for like me- Like intentionally like, lenient. Yeah, like yeah. every 20 pages, I'd be like, how is this not the fucking end of the story? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So who all, was was Manson even there or did no. he just send no, him to do it? No, he was the who, second time. Who were the murderers then? So the murderer's names, let me see. It's like Tex, right? Yeah, so I don't want to uh, mix up the people who were actually killed. And the yeah. It was were Watson, dead. Atkins, Krenwinkel, and Kasabian at Cielo Drive. And two men, two women? <clears throat> oh, yeah. One, okay. okay. Right? I right. thought it was one guy. Maybe. Yeah. The stories are very similar, so it's kind of like right. uh, it gets jumbled in my head. 
And because there, I mean, this is another book like the Dolls book where there's so much shit. I know. Uh, there's so much information. A million names that to remember. Hard, yeah. And did the cops through. right away were they like this? Definitely wasn't the Black Panther Party. Like, did they have any idea who it was at first, or no? I don't think like, they had any idea who it was okay. at first. Like because it, it's just so crazy. I mean, to go in and yeah. see all this stuff, and they didn't really have a whole lot of clues until they started talking about it. Like one of the other members, I forget what her name is, but she was in prison, um, or she was in jail and started talking about it to some of the other inmates about what was going on. And that's how they started to investigate her. Okay. And that's how they figured out. So they had the no leads till somebody on. started talking. Okay. Um, but with the, the leniency of what happened with the Mansons, you just don't see that. That's the story to me. Yeah. yeah. Like the, so, expound well oh, i mean i i don't have my notebook so so they finally catch them though this woman starts talking in prison did they do other murders after this one it's so you got to start talking about the lawyer bugliosi or yeah, whatever the prosecutor, and there's yeah. there was another murder of some italian kid that was based on what you read it clearly a a covered a cover-up and it, it it said it was a suicide but it was more than likely a, a manson family yeah uh casualty i guess and it, that's what i didn't like about the book though is because none of that ever kind of I, I know that a lot obviously a lot of these people are dying Manson himself died but it never tied anything up and it just keeps me asking more yeah well it's because all the files are redacted and and that too so, so MK yeah. Ultra, the government program the mind control program the CIA who who was it um who was the second in charge of the CIA Helms 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 yeah. it was Helms Richard Helms Richard Helms I think yeah make Richard Helms yeah um Richard Helms had every everything just go through a a file grinder or whatever yeah. paper like, shredder as fucked up as it is this is these murders and it ties back to these hippies the manson family is exactly what the government wanted because now they can say see look what happens when yep. these, it's these very are doing drugs very and doing well and now and then you get like the scheduling under rick uh, under nixon where it's like everything is like this is now a federal offense all these drug crimes and that leads to a whole other series of issues but yeah if you go back if you want to go through that all the where he gets caught and released yeah. yeah 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 so there was so many different times where he was caught while this investigation was going on there was one time where he was out in the middle of the wilderness near san francisco in like the in one of the big national parks there they found him in a cabin with a 16 year old girl who mm -hmm. had been declared a runaway and he had stolen weapons in the back of his truck that he was clearly selling there was a lot of cash stolen weapons and i think there was actually two miners that were with him they walked in on him he was naked when they go in there with two underage girls mm -hmm. and they bring him into the station he's out 24 hours later while he's on federal probation yeah. Like that, right? Nothing. Oh. There's, there's so. It's like why there. It, you never get to why to any of this, which is annoying to me. But I think that's the point. But the yeah. circumstantial because evidence leads you to all, believe, right? Like that it, there's, a there's bigger, so much of preponderance right. of yeah. evidence. There. It's Big Brother. I, it's Big Brother. It's, it's a deep state. Everybody talks about. There's been. I mean, I would say throughout throughout my most of my life, I'd be like, eh, a lot of conspiracy theories are pretty stupid. Yeah, I, I'd agree. This <laughs> this one. I believe a thousand percent. I mean, just based on the federal probation standards and sentencing standards alone, you won't find another story yeah. like this. And I, was it was it the probation officer who ended up like raising the first child of the Manson family too? Yes. yes. Like there's also what? yeah. So like he had he had a baby with one of the women. Yeah. And the probation officer just like took it and raised it. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. The Beach Boys, I think, producer or brother or something like that. Whatever, I forget what the connection was. He lived on the Manson family compound yeah. as like a fucking janitor slash gardener. Like volunteered oh. to leave yeah. the Beach Boys to go do this. Okay. All right. Like, so there was so many things in this story that if you were going to make, if you were going to take this Manson story on its face and bring it to Netflix, they'd be like, no, dude. So they did bring this book to Netflix. No, I mean, it, without it being Oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, if you were yeah, writing yeah. it st strictly from a fictional perspective, people would be like, fuck out of here, dude. This is right. ridiculous. Yeah. So they find they finally do catch them, though, and they they figure out that they're the ones who did the murder. Did they confess? Did they, like, whatever? Are they... It's... 
it's strange because sometimes they confessed and sometimes they recanted. Sometimes right. they said, yes, we did this. This is the reason why. And then they'd be like, no, that's not actually what happened. It was such a difficult case to, to process. The there was muddiest no physical of evidence. There was no fingerprints. There was no, like, with all that blood and everything, like, there was no they evidence had, left. They had the people that did it dead to rights. Like, yeah. the people that, it was but the they, Manson aspect. Correct. Of, oh, that they that couldn't die. Difficult. Okay. Yeah. What, like, individual murder cases, that was no problem to solve for them. Like, a lot of it was, they admitted it, like, their roles in it, and they just really wanted to protect Charlie. Okay. So they wanted to protect. Well, he's Christ. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, you'd protect, you're a pious guy, right? <laughs> Pious? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty pious. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would say that. Um, but like the leniency of the probation movement, I think I don't know how anyone with like a brain that looks at things objectively could say the government wasn't at least somewhat complicit in what was happening. But to me, like what, what scares me about all of that is, is okay, World War II happens. CIA starts with Dulles in early 50s. That lasted through the 90s. Now they say, oh, no, no, we don't do that kind of shit anymore. How do you know? Because you said How it was illegal, know? right? Like they, it, what mm -hmm. they were doing was so under the radar that... <clears throat> How, how can you conduct such a widespread thing that's illegal? Well, this has already right. happened, too. This is under the cover of the CIA was no longer allowed to operate inside the United States. They were never allowed they to operate. They were never supposed yeah. to. Yeah. Right, but it right. was like another time. Right. Like, definitely so, don't, guys. So, yeah, right, like, exactly. This time we mean it. So we're not doing that anymore. In the early 70s, you had, it was the Church Committee on Assassinations, and then which was going into Kennedy, and they're like, well, what's this MK Ultra thing? Yeah. And they're like, wow. <laughs> you know? well, so it like it kind of like MK don't ask, Ultra. Don't ask, don't ask, don't ask. Right. <laughs> MK Ultra came out by it. accident. Like yeah. they weren't so they did like the the Church Committee on Assassinations, and there was a follow up as like a deeper dive into into the CIA, like, what are you guys even up to? Yeah. And like they found out all this shit where it was like Get the guy in Guatemala. Get the guy in Iran. Right, I know. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, and then get it's the like, all right, Iraq. we're, we're done doing Afghanistan. that. We're done doing that. Yeah. And then you fast forward to the '80s, and it's like, well, then that there's the Iran Contra thing, where it's like we're gonna. That was a democratically elected government. In in Iran. Yeah. Yeah, that was in the '50s. But oh, no, okay. I, yeah. I missed so this. you get up. Yeah. So Iran Contra. This is after. Yeah. 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 The, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So now you got the. Um, they become a what do you call it when it's a religious government the ayatollah yeah. theocracy, theocracy. Yeah. theocracy. Yeah. yeah and they're at war with iraq and iraq so i was saying also a cia guy originally <laughs> dude if you look at it's all the, the people we've puppeted and placed throughout the world it has like it's never insane. gone well it it's has insane. almost always backfired we just stopped yeah. doing that yeah shit. but yeah. it could have gone well we just don't know about it yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. Totally. Where, you know like where i talk about it where i say like it's almost impossible to get away with murder now who knows there's <laughs> probably a lot of people that get away with murder now yeah. uh yeah in this city all the time Oh, yeah. True. That's a mutually agreed upon combat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, did you know that's the reason why they use gangs have used that in Chicago as a defense because it's still on the books. Mutually agreed upon combat. I thought that Jesus. was like only Texas. No. Like so. You, what about when they? So they won't. They won't like testify against each other, and they'll say like no, and they'll get yeah. out different. Like you can kind of see it, what's happening in the RICO trial with Slim Thug or Young Thug right now, where they've had this same dude that's gone on that trial over and over and over again, and each time he's given different answers about why, what happened, and this latest time, he just snitched on a dude who just died, and he put everything on it. He was like, well, now I can finally be free, so I'm not scared to say it, and he put everything on this one guy who was dead. So they're snitching on dead people, yeah, yeah. which is essentially what happens here a yeah. lot. They can't prosecute because... The gangs don't want it, and it's like a honor amongst thieves type or murderers. I guess. There's, I mean, yeah. there's something honorable in that. I'd say. <laughs> if I want to, yeah. What if I showed up to Lollapalooza and wanted to kick your ass after you invited me to do so? I don't think there would be anything I could do it. 
about it, right? Well, a couple people I mean, did show up too, but we just took selfies. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, they, w- w- how'd that go? They're like, yeah, right, no. they're <laughs> like, all right, I'm ready to do a little fisticuffs. <laughs> <laughs> so took your pink cowboy hat off, place it to the side. <laughs> yeah. So, and like one another aspect of this that is crazy, and it definitely lends to the government new the parole paperwork and the probation paperwork. Every single month, you at least once a month, typically for people that are on parole or probation, it's going to be once a week. So you'll have these once a week meetings that you meet up with your probation officer and they'll ask you what's going on in your life. What did you do this week? Where are you working? How much money are you making? Is this still your address? What is, who is your next of kin? They just go through this litany of questions that they have to answer and they give this narrative. They give you the copy of the narrative. So you have it for your record. Manson was on probation off and on, at least 80% of his life from the time that he was 13. There was 13 pages of documentation (sighs) about the entirety of time whenever they were FOIA requested that they had. They said that they were lost in a fire before. They had like electronic copies of records. Super convenient. Yeah. Right? Super convenient. Well, And a lot of the evidence for this book that was the only like unredacted stuff came from files that were stolen out of an office and I think it was in Pennsylvania. So yeah. it was like the, a lot of Cause the, they would have had nothing. Right. Exactly. They would have had nothing. Everything would have been destroyed. So you, lost in a fire. So you have that level of probation, that level of violent crimes and not, I mean, we're talking some of the crimes we didn't even mention. He was found not guilty, but criminally liable for the rape of a minor. Mm-hmm. Like a, I think it was like a 12 or 13 year old boy. And even that doesn't show up in his like official rap sheet still. Like it Jesus. didn't show up, <clears throat> even though they knew he had done this because he did that while he was on federal probation. Yeah. Like because he had the 10 year sentence, he got out after six, which you're not supposed to do federally. Right. And then his very next was arrest was for the rape of a minor. And, and he so did, they let that him. wasn't a good enough probation violation. To yeah, about. they. Who is they? Yeah, whoever they are, they let them keep Who's going they? and going That's and going question. and getting worse and worse and worse. And people are getting murdered no in the knows. worst way. No one knows who the they are. Then they do end up putting him away for life because they had to. It was like the experiment got out of control. Right. Or yeah. probably something like that. And um, he lived a full life, though. He lived until he was 83. Right. And, and became kind of like a cult figure that yep. some fucking weirdos were like super into, right? Like, oh, big time! Yeah. Like there, he there was one report that I read, not inside the book, that he had upwards to two hundred and fifty, three hundred marriage proposals while he was in prison. Yeah, like through pen pals, various pen pals that he corresponded nonstop to people about what was happening. And each one, like all the stories would be completely different. He would make up different like uh, alibis. He would make up different subjects in the story. And he was just a legit crazy, crazy guy. Did they find in the trial that he was like, he did plead insanity or he didn't? He just. No, I don't think he pled insanity. He he tried to, um, this detail's a little murky, but he tried to defend himself for a while. Okay, be his own lawyer. Do you guys remember anything about that part? No. I remember him. Yeah, so he was trying to be his own lawyer and then something happened where the judge was like, nah, man, this is a little too fucking, (laughs) this is a little too much. Because I think some of the judges had to have known. Because if you're a judge, you're not listening to the probation officer because you're responsible for the people that are in your district. So they had to be on the no because yeah. the probation, like the probation office of the pro board, bring, and if you're on federal parole, you don't even have to go to a judge. You the parole board is just like, nah, dude, come back. You commit even if you get arrested, you don't have to be convicted. Right, anything. Right. If you get arrested, then they'll take you back. Typically, these these went before judges, and the judges approved that he doesn't go to prison even while on this stuff. Knowing that he's dangerous in their own district. <clears throat> what? Right. How How did no details, like, all right, it sounds like Bugliosi kind of knew what was up. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was the other guy? Uh, we had, we mentioned his name before we hit record. Bugliosi just sounds like a name that- um, yeah. West. Yeah. Jolly West. Jolly, uh, jo- yeah, Jolly West. Um, and then a few others. I, I want to know how they kept secret and what their incentive was to keep secret afterwards, especially for someone who tried to monetize the whole thing anyways in Bugliosi with a book. Yeah. And 
like wh- why were there no detail I, I, I don't know it there i mean probably because it you could relate it back to a crime really yeah. i mean if you were knowing you know what was going on with the even the lsd mind control aspect of it for other people that were involved like you had that knowing if they knew and they were like kind of manipulating manson through lsd techniques what were you manipulating him for like you like all of those elements would become part of a crime and there was a Seriously. part um so use mk ultra for instance i think it said there was a dozen people who knew about that that um in that whatever you want to call it that that program's existence and it's like even if the president himself wanted to know about it he it was on a need to know basis and the president himself wasn't necessarily on that need to know basis so he couldn't even get information on it if he wanted to it was so it's like how there's a handful of people that obviously know and they they had to have had just a, a metaphorical or literal gun pointed to their head saying do not like this is what you're doing do not ever say or do like do anything different yeah. i guess Here's my thing like when i'm 80 years old if i knew a see if i was sitting on something oh, like that yeah. and i and i have like cancer buddy i'm sitting down in front of a microphone and i'm spilling everything i don't give everything. a fuck so I, that's the part to me. I'm like, how is anyone still alive from this era? Who like? I'm sure. A chance and they might. Uh, not many. Yeah. was the he was the DA, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Of LA, mm-hmm. um, he wrote the book Helter Skelter that um, was the original like right that brought the whole Manson family to pop culture and relevance. Yeah. And it was uh, O'Neill, the author of this book kind of really pressing Bugliosi is like, no, 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 you were wrong here and you knew you were wrong here and you still published this anyways. Why? So they think he may, may have been in on it. Yeah. And like Dr. Skelter was throwing and him off died, the scent. Right? And he, but he also made, he died in 15. All of his okay, money yeah. based on that court case too. Yeah. Right. Writing the book. And he wrote it with like, with the help of Charles Manson in some ways, like Charles Manson, be like, eh, I don't know about that. Like that behind the right. scenes, like trying to tell him what was right, what wasn't right about that book. Um, but the author of this book was threatened by Bugliosi mm-hmm. and whenever he would confront him about different facts and how they were actually adding up, he would be like, don't go anywhere. You don't know where this is going to go type of veil yeah. language. Yeah. Like which, just uh-huh. leave that alone. I got to be honest. If I'm that guy, if I'm Tom O'Neill and I'm going up to Bugliosi and talking about this and I really had the suspicions that the CIA is involved I'm probably leaving it the fuck alone. I'm probably looking at all these people that are murdered, knowing that I have my family and being like, is it worth it? If it's in the past, it's in the past. Yeah. <laughs> well, that even goes, who was, oh, I can't think of the guy's name though, but up to like more modern times where Epstein gets arrested in 2005 and he gets a slap on the wrist and then some Bush appointee was like mm. the DA or something in Florida and he is like on he said it in an interview or said it somewhere is like yeah i was told this is above my pay grade it's like who who is telling you that right. who yeah. who is telling they? you that and it's like the same thing goes back to this where yeah. it's like yeah well you someone goes to buliosi like hey this is how this is going to be handled or and what no. are you supposed to do in that position if you're one of those da's you're one of those judges that you're you don't know what's going on you know like they're like you're not in, read in on this i think the natural inclination to most people especially most people in government like if one of my supervisors and like the marine corps for example which is the marine corps is wildly different than anything cia but if there was something that i didn't understand and they're like look you don't have the intel on this this is just what we need to do right now if i'm in the position of trust with the the i trust the superior over me i'm likely going to do that because i trust the people that are over me if you're in the cia or if you're a, if you're a judge or if you're mm-hmm. a da and somebody over top is like, hey, we're working on something much bigger than this. You have to kind of let this go because there's a bigger case. That kind of shit happens all the time. Like with a RICO indictment, yeah. for example. Yeah. Like if you have the if you're a DA and you find somebody and they have twenty pounds of marijuana, you want to or cocaine, you, you want, want the guy who has mm-hmm. twenty thousand pounds of it. Right. You you'll yeah. be like, Okay, we're working on we want to get where the supplier is coming from. Mm-hmm. Sure, you have this small level of distri- distribution, but we want to go after the person on top. You're gonna be like Okay, that makes sense. As mm-hmm. a DA, you're going to move away from your case and they have something bigger. And you trust that. Yeah. Maybe that's what happens in these situations. That's that's the best spin that could possibly be 
yeah. verbalized, I guess, because I had nothing. It's like, why would you, uh, aside from the fact that just fear, but why I'll, would you not? Right. Other but than was, um, was probably, I bet you there's elements of both. I probably. think for our yeah. own sanity, we desperately want to believe that the people that at the, the top of our country are good and they know this what they're America. doing and they have a plan Even though we're, we're that presented global, so much evidence yeah. to the contrary and that it's not Got just some probably rich 60 guy. 70 80 years of evidence to the contrary <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. yeah but that it's not just some rich guy named dulles who's like i have an idea for an experiment and like is so rich he can do whatever the fuck he wants like that you don't want not to think even that the way. president can know about it. right right and the only yeah. and they difference don't care is, what it, they don't care and like in that book in the Dulles book <laughs> the Dulles brothers didn't care what the president wanted or said no right. like matter. they just yeah. like ah. and in <laughs> fact they told him you don't want to be read in on this right yeah you like don't want to be culpable you don't want to right. know right which <laughs> if I'm the president I do yeah, yeah. like I do yeah like because this is my watch like this right. is this is what I'm supposed to be doing I think the biggest hole in the 20 pounds of cocaine example is what could possibly you be looking forward to or looking at that is worse than the rape of multiple minors? Or eight murders. Yeah, like, like maybe a yeah. big just, trafficking yeah. ring, like something. But they're eat, no matter what climate it, was it is, kinda Hollywood yeah. it could be on a bigger level. You know, like if you're looking at that one individual person, can we save, like if you, for like, uh, what was that, Taken? Yeah. Like what if you have you find one person that was sexually assaulted, but you have the ability to stop an entire ring, ring? You know, like how do you balance that morally as a high level prosecutor, judge, or yeah. law enforcement officer? It's tough. Easy at the time. Did because like, it was you could see his record. Like was Sharon Tate's family ever like what the fuck? How oh, the that's fuck a good was this guy I out I hadn't there, thought like, about that either. That yeah. that never came up. Like there but was like no she was already outcry. with Polanski, who, yeah, you know, but I don't think people knew about Polanski. Not yet. But well, yeah. at the end of the book, that video, do you remember that? Uh. Uh-uh. So, supposedly, and this is like a Roman contest. Polanski ended up being a pedophile. Yeah, mm-hmm. he okay. can't come back to the United States because of okay charges. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And so they found. But it, I also read somebody thought that was trumped up based on this shit. Maybe we'll never know, but that they found the police originally found a video in the loft of the house and like videos just weren't really a thing. Yet. Yeah. Like Polanski had one cause he was a super rich. Okay. Guy, yeah. And there was, they like played the tape and the original report was that it was Polanski having sex with Sharon Tate. Okay. Then there was another report that said, that's not true. It was Sharon Tate being forced to have sex with two men while Polanski was behind the camera filming it. Okay. So like there's all like there's lots of weird details around that and I right don't know. around Polanski. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And it also made some of the aspects of the book a little more palatable, knowing that Roman Polanski was a piece of shit. Like where he there's a scene where they describe going back and. Polanski going back into the house that him and Tate lived in and like walking through and like the authors describing it as being like this super emotional event like he's going in and seeing because they had just set up like the bassinet and like the kids yeah. room and all that shit and there was blood in there too there's blood everywhere so he's going through and you're like well, Roman Polanski is a piece of shit too I just feel bad yeah. for Sharon Tate and that whole squad damn yeah. that's crazy okay yeah, yeah. So ultimately, what do you guys think? Do you think the CIA was involved? Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have gotten to the point where the CIA, just based off of everything going on in the world right now, all the way back through, like you said, um, through the Dulles <clears throat> Brothers. Yeah, yeah, the Dulles Brothers. And through like the Nuremberg trials. Basically, the end of the forty-eight. Even really kind of that Operation Sunrise <laughs> in 45 <laughs> With the, was before right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I they they no longer have the benefit of the doubt for me. I don't know if they like see. You haven't really heard the other side of the story. What if someone came out of a book and been like, "If you idiots think there's a deep fucking state, like here's why there's not." I'd read that. Yeah, but I like to, like, I feel like those contrast. kind of. I would be much Written more. Written by I've never heard this name before. <laughs> totally not the CIA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like oh I look God. at it now. Current events, I think it'd be harder to prove. This one, when the CIA is essentially like, mm, yeah, like, yeah, we kind of did do it a little bit, 
Well, a little bit. There, so, but even like that, so like that Jolly West that you brought up before. <laughs> so like Jolly West, like there's receipts where he was a CIA asset and got like a $20,000 grant to do some of this stuff in California. And when he was on academic leave or whatever, he was a psychiatrist at, I think it was Oklahoma. It was Oklahoma. Okay. So then when Jack Ruby is in prison, who do they call to be his psychiatrist when he's, they call Jolly West. West. Yep. And wouldn't you know it, they injected him with, what was that? Sodium pentothal. Okay. The truth, the truth serum. serum. Yeah. And he goes insane. Okay, so he had been in solitary confinement in jail. Jolly West meets with him. He killed an elephant with LSD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jolly West. It's Jolly West. He gave him Christ. supposedly it was, yeah. uh, the like Tulsa Zoo or something, and they're like, "Hey, watch, we're gonna make this elephant freak out to all these little kids," and they injected it with LSD, and it turned out they gave it like a thousand times more than they should have, and it just died in front of all the little kids. Jesus Christ! Yeah. And then he would show up, but like, yeah, I'm the elephant guy because it, it like went like viral for yeah. the time on like right. all the news stations and shit. Yeah. Oh my god. So, but but that yeah. was the guy that of all the psychiatrists in the world, let's fly in Jolly West to interview like the the number one guy that everybody wanted to interrogate and now his now, now he's deemed can. psychotic and yeah. everything is indemissible i think of all of the conspiracy theories that i've ever read this is the one that i believe without a doubt i believe that the cia was so complicit in all of this shit based on i mean you've seen forrest gump <laughs> uh california was just so wildly different at the time yep. being they had People, oh, we didn't even talk about the fact that inside the Manson family, um, a federal operative was put inside the Manson yeah. family. So like, they knew exactly. They what knew was exactly. Happening. Right. And then this guy that was put in there kind of turned and was like with them too. And it's like. We, well, they had a lot of people like that. A lot of agents were like that, where they would be like, hey, you have to info. So they'd grow their hair out. They'd like mm -hmm. learn the the lingo, like the hippie lingo yeah, and like become in that, like they would literally infiltrate these different, and they did with the Black Panthers too. Yeah. And they would have these agents who would go undercover for years. And one of them was with the Manson family. And that is yeah. a pretty common, um, I don't know how common, but I've definitely heard of it before where people that are designed or assigned to infiltrate a group end up recognizing with the group there was a guy that i worked with his name was troy and at first he was a reconnaissance officer and then he went to the delta group and then he be, he put in a package into the headquarters marine corps through the training command that he wanted to go be like an undercover guy at um uh, at an al-qaeda school like an al-qaeda type of programming at, outside of cairo and he got it accepted. He found like it was on the black web, like how to get there. He ended up going to Cairo for like a year and a half. He told about this whenever he was on deployment, he came back to the Marine Corps. So he, he said he went to Cairo and he was in these classes where they did, like they taught you the Quran, they taught you like their ways, they taught you like militant shit. And he was just learning he had said that he wanted to conduct an attack inside the United States. And that's how he got there. White guy, Marine background. He was like honest about his Marine background, all this shit. He goes there and one day they're burning the American flag and he's like, cool. Like, I like this. <laughs> this feels good. <laughs> and he said that he was walking down the street of Cairo one day and a Westerner walked by and it was just like the top portion of her sleeve was like, uh, you could see like the mm -hmm. skin at the top of her arm. And he said that slut needs to be stoned to death. Like he was like, I was walking through like, like that. Slut needs like to be stoned yeah. to death, Like in his head. And he said for like a second, he got a flashback of like, no, no, no. Troy likes slutty girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is what Troy actually likes. And he said that he was going to like the market or something. And he just kept walking and went to the U S embassy and went and said like his name. I'd like to go home now. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm like done. That. It's like either you take me or I'm going to get some rocks. Yeah. But, yeah, 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 yeah. but he's, he said it. Right yeah. He said it under the veil of we need to have compassion for people that are radicalized. He was like yeah. anybody could get radicalized at any at any point. Yeah. Like I wanted you don't, to do a blog series where I join a cult and then see if I can get out of it. 
No, you'd be that, now that I have kids, I'd be a great I can't. cultist, dude. I think I would. You'd be the best cultist. I think I'd really enjoy. Have it. you uh, sense of community? Mm-hmm. There was adventure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my yoga studio back in New Jersey. Their Instagram started getting real weird, and it was run by this man. It was a hot yoga studio who would like. I That's think chaps, didn't I show you? Yeah. Um, and then it started being more than just yoga. He would have all the women come upstairs in the hot room and you talk about your troubles and like you wail out, you let your all your feelings out. And then they got another space above the coffee shop in town that was like, if you want to find your minds out, like it just got weirder and weirder. And I was like, I want to see how far in I can go. You're like, I can't turn around anymore. But I ran out of money. And I got pregnant, yeah. so I couldn't do the high yoga. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I think yeah. his Kids. goal was probably to get you pregnant. Probably. Yeah. Right. That's like, how it yeah. seems like a lot of these cults end up. Like, True. God told me I have to fuck your wife. Exactly. Like, yeah. 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 That seems to be 90%. You're right. right. A lot of it's fucking. Yeah. yeah. Being super. It seems like they had hard. a lot of sex in the Manson family. Yeah. yeah. Lots yeah. of sex. Like, I don't know Wait, how. He had, to, he had to have sex. It was like once he woke up. Like before yeah, breakfast, was... then you'd meditate, have sex again. Then you'd have sex before lunch and after lunch. Take a nap. I think it was seven times a day. Was, they were supposed yeah. to have Jesus. sex seven times a day. That's too much. How That's is nobody in the cult like, wait a minute. A month <laughs> Your girl's dried out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. seems like more fun for you. The the lube, get the other one. <laughs> the lube bill has to be out of control. Yeah. That's crazy. Damn. That's a lot. Overall, Charles Manson, bad guy. Also, I feel like he smelled bad. Probably. Yeah, I think uh, they all looked like they actually, smelled bad. Actually, that's... One of the reasons he like got kicked out of the Beach Boys or whatever, wasn't it? Because they're like, dude, you really fucking stink. <laughs> like, did, wasn't that? I feel. I mean, like... But if you're having sex seven times a day, you're gonna be musty. Yeah. Hard not to be stinky. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Cum stinks. It does. People don't talk about that enough. It's true. We'll get into that next week. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Send suggestions on the next book. Yeah. That is blatantly anti-American that we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> or something that's like actually you guys are fucking wrong. We do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I'm wrong yeah. all the time. It's gonna. I'm gonna take some convincing at this point. Though, I, I think, think that we're just gonna go back and forth, being like, oh, we're fucked up. No, actually, we're really good. We did a good job this time. This book makes us look awesome again. Yeah. We yeah. can we do one? Of, yeah, we need to do one of those books because I want to feel that. What, what do you think is a good era for one of those books? Of like when we were really doing good stuff. Yeah. CIA got pre CIA, I guess. Uh, let's go. Was, Even like it, any book oh, pre CIA, what was it called? Bad. The uh, secret the OSS OSS yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Off, office of uh, sec- secretive services they had O N I too oh there's the, this great book we were just like all buddy buddy with like the entire Nazi party yeah oh it's yeah. there's this a great book to read it's called My Father's Secret War where this journalist her dad was getting old and she knew he was in like World War Two but didn't know anything other than that really and she starts finding. He gets senile and old, and she has to start going through his house in a way she never did before. And she starts finding like weapons and guns and all this shit hidden all over the place. And then finding, see, and she slowly uncovers the fact that he was like the top OSS guy in World War II and all this crazy shit. It's a really good book. It's a true Damn. story. Uh, but it's called Do My you Father's have the name? Secret. My Father's Secret okay. War is the name of the book. Well, maybe we should um, do that one. But it's fascinating. It's a really interesting book. You're making me read a lot. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I I just did the audiobook, this but that's a audiobook. nice healthy medium. Yeah. I feel like audiobooks count too. This is what I've been doing with books. I do audio and reading. Split it, yeah. So then I listen to it on my way to work and from work, and then I read at Pick home. It up. So then I know the names and how to actually pronounce them, mm-hmm. which is sick for oh. me because I've always been really bad about that, like yeah. Voldemort. I've oh, like... <laughs> I have a book that I can make you guys talk about sometime. Uh, who was the, expect who is the Roosevelt who was like, I'm the bull, I'm out there. Teddy. Teddy, yeah. Teddy. Teddy Roosevelt. He was you, good. He, you know, he tried to run for a third term. Yeah. He was just like, fuck it, I'm the running bull for moose a third party. term. Bull yeah. moose party. And then when it didn't work out, he got so depressed. He was like, I'm going to the Amazon to check out this new river that's the never been. sun died there. A lot of crazy. It's called, yeah. the book is called The River of Doubt. And it's all about his journey down the Amazon with this crew. And it's like. Do they do ayahuasca? Maybe he'll have to read the book to find out. But it's I mean, like, that's our next book. We'll just go ahead and do. We'll just say that next month that book, River of Doubt. River of Doubt. It's so fucking good. Because I love Teddy read it anyway. Yeah. What's that? How long ago did you read I've it? I've actually read it twice. I read it about oh, a year so, ago hey, again because I had read it before. Yes. Yeah. So it's actually really good. The River of Doubt. The River, River of Doubt. Buy it on Audible right now. Yes, and it's interesting because it goes through the history back in the day, like during you know running for the third yeah. term and the the different parties and blah blah blah, and then it gets into the actual journey down the Amazon. And uh, spoiler alert, shit goes wrong. 
Yeah. Damn. A lot of shit goes wrong yeah. for people he loves, too. Mm. Damn. Son. I, n- more than that. More than that? I yep. knew his son. He brought a whole Candace squad down on that. Candace Millard? Do you guys ever wish yep. something that you know is probably shouldn't happen for the good of society, but you kind of want to see it happen just for the internet reaction? What Give me mean? an example. Manson being released. That would have been wild. That would have been kind of sweet. I mean, they let the dude out that fucking shot Reagan. Frankly. <laughs> also, he tweets some all weird the time. connections. Yes. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. yeah. Hinkley's dad was like a donor and good friend of George H.W. Bush. And they were together a disturbingly close time to when- It was like two months, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, before what? he shot Reagan. And guess who would have been president if yeah. he would have died? No way. H. And, w. Guess who, and guess what? He you, used to run the CIA. H.W. was in charge of the, CIA. Like the CIA. What? Yes. Yeah. That's why I have, I've always said that H.W. was the most qualified person to ever be president. Like on he paper, what, what he on. what he had done depends on what you value. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Yes. I, I yeah. mean, title and, and yeah. I, I see yeah. experience yeah. alone. Yep, yeah, because he was a senator, he's a businessman, a he's congressman, congressman, smoke head, head, of, yeah, yeah. head of the CIA, World War II smoke fighter show. pilot. Yeah, he was hot. Some people, yeah. young age yeah, he was an yeah. athlete too. Yeah, he was a big Yale baseball player. Uh huh. Yeah. Grew up in a skull and bones family. Yeah. yeah. Well, his dad, Prescott really loved laundering that Nazi money too. Everybody's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. I think the older the, yeah. it's, it's weird your kind of trope as I'm like growing up and like a Navy kid, I'm like, man, everybody fucking comes America. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. the older that you get your, and you know how to read books that aren't Dr. Seuss, you're like, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> yikes. Why do we gotta do that shit? Because I feel like we don't have to do that shit. Right. Do we have We're to do that shit? To it. I think greed is a hell of a you, thing. Think, but it's not even a lot of greed a lot of times. I don't think you greed. get I don't know. I don't think you get global power through pure virtues. Yeah, that's yeah. It's that's you I think you, don't you think, could get it through I think we could get it through economics more so than the way But economics you ain't getting with pure virtue either. But like we said before, no, all not our pure, metal no. and backfires. Yeah, all of it. Like all of it. All of it. Ends up costing us even more like than- the guy with, you know, Iran that we we're talking about. He came and like met with Eisenhower. They got along. He's like, I'm, I'm not Soviet, but like that's our oil. Like we got to get something. They're like, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> like, Bin Laden's kids has gone to school here. Like yeah. Saddam Hussein's kids were taught English at Lackland Air Force Base. <laughs> like the, it's crazy. The, People don't talk about that Iran Iraq war in the eighties enough because like the the we were playing at both sides, CIA mm-hmm. involved both sides, and then we used that money to basically fund um wash it through drugs in California and then send that to uh what was the uh the Contras in central in, mm-hmm. in Central America, like funding these rebels. It was like this whole web and it's like it all just leads back to CIA. And Is that like, just a bunch of bored, rich white dudes who are like, let's see what we can do today? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what, this is Squid Games. But yeah, it's yeah. Like International Squid, squid Games. Yeah. 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 Damn. A devil's chessboard, if you will. I'd devil's like to see board. more ladies getting into it. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to see us meddling more. You guys, more. like, I don't know. <laughs> what kind of meddling you want to do, Kate? <laughs> Uh, more research what country into, would you want to take down? I think down? we need more lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? We probably shouldn't put that puppet president yeah. in there. It's we got to deal with work. him. We got to pay him all this money. Yeah. Training. I didn't Sorry. think that uh, an episode that involves LSD brainwashing was going to make me want to really do LSD. It ruled, you know, but awesome. you got to respect you it. You had me yeah. until the spiders thing, Kate. I don't do spiders in any form. I wouldn't even like looking at a spider on that TV screen. Dude, it was there. a patio like this and size. I would have. I was laying down and they, it was like every wall, they started coming up oh, every wall yeah. to the oh. ceiling. My toes are curved. Wasn't it, isn't the story Dude, about the guy who he synthesized it, like did it by accident and then he got some on his hand and he was riding his bike home and like, he just started. Like absorbed having, through his yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, what the fuck did I it just, is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was, Yeah, it was crazy. Was that the same place? Was that Horse Island? No, that was no. Assateague Island. That was another time. I passed out. I, no, let's hear really it. You really lived a life. Yeah. I know. 
we went to go to Ocean City, Maryland on a Friday, me and my friends on a whim. Well, it turns Dewey out in the Beach. summertime, and this was pre like smartphones, mm -hmm. we couldn't find a hotel. So we're like, Assateague Island's right next door. Let's bring all our liquor over there. We'll just sleep out in the sand. Who gives a shit? Well, they don't spray that for mosquitoes or anything like that, you know? Drank too much liquor, passed out outside next to the fire. When I woke up, oh. I was just like a piece of meat laid outside for the mosquitoes, basically. Uh. Also, I did a little skinny dip and it was a different time. <laughs> so I was like running through. You could hear the horses clip clopping across the... Anyway. Who's this dumb bitch? When I woke up, <laughs> my entire face, my ears, my uh. armpits, my like... Cro like they got in my shorts, like every inch of my body was covered in mosquito bites. I got physically like very ill. I probably have malaria or something. Yeah. The first time you told me, I remember laughing really hard because you're like, chaps, when I tell you I woke up and my bra size should have been two sizes bigger because <laughs> the amount of mosquitoes that were in my bra. It was, I was covered uh, in bites. Oof. This there, was like high school. Was there's that book that talks college. about that too. What's that? It's like a into the wild yeah remember that yep where he's like it's the only spot that's right great, now isn't it great that still has movie. wild yes horses? it's a great movie like isn't one of the only oh, spots in america know. that has it assateague island there's a few islands down there that have wild wild horses. i'm pretty sure wild horses are all over the west yeah i'm wild. pretty sure they're out west how like, do wild horses not have issues with their hooves getting too long it's a great question that's i've actually wanted question. that i saw i saw I always uh, have to do it yeah. domesticated yeah. horse get out just on like instagram reels or something they found the horse like months and months and months later and it was dude it was like a dude who hadn't cut his fingernails yeah. but all the other horses were fine yeah the wild it, like, horses integrated into the wild horses have you I ever wonder why. have you ever seen that thing about the wild horses where <laughs> they will they will grow like little zebra stripes on their legs mm -mm. no yeah what so a power move yeah but like zebra stripes because you're like how is this camouflage because you're like the lion is camouflaged yeah the grass is you're black and white i can see they're camouflaged against each other so like the lions can't pick out, they can't like organize their hunt because they all look the same. So when people were studying zebras, they would like tag their ear, put a paint blot on their haunch, and every single time that would be the zebra that got attacked and eaten. They'd be like, no, God, stay yeah, away. Like, what are, what? So Thanks that's so what they figured out what that striping was. And wild horses will develop that similar striping on the lower part of their legs. Oh, shit. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. In like... Like you're born without it, and then somehow metabolically you just start doing it. That's crazy. Like it's not like your next generation. Micro evolution. Well, yeah. that's I. Uh, people think this tramp stamp is a tattoo. It just started to form. Like freshman <laughs> yeah, yeah, year, yeah, yeah. it just started to spiral <laughs> up out of my butt crack. It's like whoa. So. All right, we got the rundown. Yeah. All right, All right. that's yeah. it. We'll see you guys next week. Sound the retreat. Thanks, Joe. I mess it up by asking. Thank you guys. Oh no.